morning folks as predicted it's raining and in fact probably been raining for three four hours now around about seven in the morning I've managed to get myself packed away um, and yeah day three is about trying to achieve the heights of Winter Hill and have a look at uh, Rivington Tower so we will have completed the circuit once we've got to there um, in terms of the three towers but obviously I then need to head home essentially to complete the circuit um, and complete the round so without further ado I will just quickly show you where I've been uh, camping and you can see as per the rules of wild camping leave it as you kind of found it and I'll leave no trace um, so yeah that's where I was last night and um, yeah as you can see my pack is all ready to go so without further ado we shall go here's a reminder of where we're going and we're doing the West Pennine Way just over there near that flagpole is the village stocks which I'm sure I would uh, like to put a few people there and over in this direction we have the sign for the local village tea room which I'm sure won't be open at this time in the morning we do have a cup of tea now and we have the, the church as well a bit difficult to see what it says on the side but it possibly 1719 don't know, bit of a guess. And then we have obviously the position for you to um, sit down and put your legs through, I guess. Founded in 1663, built in 1703. Here, let no man be a stranger. Which will take us up onto Winter Hill. And initially at Winter Hill we'll come across the Pigeon Tower. And the Pigeon Tower was built by Lord Leverhulme for his wife. Whereas I've actually uh, just put a shed in the garden for my wife. Here we have an actual uh, map which is not great at the moment because of all the rainwater but it's telling us we are here and in fact we're kind of going up the hillside this is all mainly hillside um, with all pathways and various stone bridges over it um, there's what they call the Japanese gardens and the Italian gardens. Um, he actually built a, a big bungalow with with an actual um, dance room, dance hall within it. Um, yeah, it's quite an extensive piece of estate. So this is what we'll be mainly visiting today. The pigeon tower that I spoke about, which he built for his wife, is kind of up this way. Um, I think it's a yeah, over over towards this way, and then eventually we'll go over on to Rivington Pike, um, which is where essentially the the third tower that I've spoke about that we're kind of heading for that makes the day. Um, day number three, tower number three in, in essence.
I think you can see it as well. It's, it's actually quite kind of misty up here, quite eerie. see some steps going up there but in actual fact I'm just gonna take you around the corner to have a look those steps actually go over a bridge And just to overlook from whence we came. Yeah, this is the actual term, the Italian lake. and would have been part of the Italian gardens. And you can see the waterfall coming down there. I've actually never seen as much water coming down Normally it's just a bit of a trickle, um, but yeah, that makes it a lot more spectacular. So we're going to go along up some more steps. Yeah, if you bring, bring yourself to these parts, We'll certainly get the heart rate going and we're just starting to see the pigeon tower coming into view it's actually having some maintenance work done So in my endeavour to try and get round the footpaths being closed, I've actually ended up near the waterfall on the lake that we were originally visiting. Yes, it said that the lady actually used the top room as like a reading room and a sewing room. I can imagine just looking out over the hills. We're about a thousand feet up, and I think that's probably about 50 or 80 feet high up as well. So, it would have had a magnificent view. So, in the distance, we've just come from the Pigeon Tower, and we've walked along this path here and come up this bit of a hill and go up onto what is termed Rivington Pike. So at the top of Rivington Pike, there's a, um, a building that was originally Lord Leverhulme's haunting lodge. Um, and I believe this haunting lodge actually had its own cellar as well, uh, where no doubt the, store, the um, whiskey or some other hard liquor to obviously get them warm again. And it had a fireplace and all those other things. I know from experience this is the last of the steps. I'm all out with steps. See you in a moment. So we've arrived at the pike in the building that I was pointing out to you before. You can see it's pretty misty. And in fact, the wind is that strong up here, it actually blew off my rain cover on my rucksack. I had to stop and uh, adjust a few things. I do like when somebody's replaced this bit of fence. I'm not sure if you're able to read it, but they've actually etched onto it 
do more than just exist. I like that. Up until 1896, these, this track that we were on um, gave access to the people of Horwich and Bolton, access to the moors, particularly going up to Winter Hill. Uh, but what happened then was that the kind of Lord of the Manor of, well, of Smith Hill's estate, he actually um, blocked access um, because obviously it was disturbing his grouse and uh, there was a bit of a mass trespass that actually happened. Um, about 10,000 people turned up and the stone here to my, just over the side here, um, is in memory of that particular event and in fact it was about a hundred years before um, access was readily became available to everybody. The title of the stone Will You Come, Will you come On Sunday Morning? That was actually in the local newspaper as a headline and it was basically asking obviously the people of Horridge and Bolton to, to join the mass trespass that actually took place 30 years before the mass trespass of, that happened in Edale. So on Sunday the 6th of September 1896, 10,000 Boltonians marched by this spot to reclaim an ancient right of way over Winter Hill. The path is now dedicated as a public right of way the enjoyment of all, 6th of September 1996. So there's something you don't see very often. In fact, I think it's the first time I've ever seen it. I'm not sure if you're able to read that, but it says Winter Hill 2.25 kilometers to the top. Usually these things are still in miles. But this one's gone metric. In the distance is Winter Hill, honestly, I am pointing you in the right direction. Well, we actually stood on it, but the actual peak is in the distance. I've probably got another mile or so to go to get to the top. It's amazing to think that all this land is so close by to the urban area of Bolton and Manchester. So if you live anywhere in that direction, why not come up and explore? Maybe choose a better day than I did. Or maybe choose the, a day like I did. And then you can guarantee you'll probably be here on your own. Like I say, I'll, I live relatively close by, maybe five miles away, something of that ilk. And it is almost like the guarantee every time you come up here. It can be glorious sunshine down below and you get to the top here and it's snowing, hailing, rain, and just occasionally you get sunshine. But yeah, it's great to be out in the wilds. I believe so anyhow. As you can see we're finally down into the valley and we're going to be following this stream in the direction of the flow for about two miles I would say before we have to head up back to the hill that we originally 
started on. So I've taken this opportunity to sit down because having lived in my waterproofs for nearly two, three days on and off, the sun, sun is probably a bit of a strong word, but it's a little bit warmer now. So I think I can uh, take the opportunity to take my waterproofs off. The other thing you may have noticed is I've acquired a pheasant feather. Um, when I was getting over one of the styles, I actually saw it caught in a um, in a piece of barbed wire, unfortunately. Um, but I thought I would collect it as a memory of my uh, journey, especially as I'm kind of coming towards the end. Anyhow, I shall uh, do a little bit of de-robing and uh, hopefully um, I will see you shortly. Here we have a bit of signage to help us and remind us where we are. So see the sign Longworth Clough. That is the valley that we're actually in now. And as you can see, this has been given over to the Wildlife Trust and is often in the UK, supported by the Lottery Fund. And of course, we have our faithful sign for the West Pennine Way. So we are very much near the end now. In the distance you can see Winter Hill and the radio mass all the mobile phone masts as well. We've actually walked down the side of the hill as it were. In the distance I can see Belmont um, which we passed as well down into the valley and then we've come in this kind of direction and this is the, the path that I'm now on just down in this dip here there's another style which will be my last style that I go through on the West Pennine Way and in fact the last badge I'll actually see and just a little bit further along there's a bench and I'm using that as my finishing point One last climb up to the bench and then we can have a chat. Finally at my journey's end completed the West Pennine Way 46 miles two nights and three walking days it's been tough it's certainly been a lot tougher than I expected. As you can imagine when I originally planned this, I planned that I would go in July, do the walk in July, hopefully with reasonably good weather. Well, I think the, uh, the evidence will show it was certainly not sunny for the period of time that I was out there. I actually think in terms of some of the routes I've done before, this has probably got the best signage. I think it helps that it, it's actually that, that kind of orangey colour that it is, 
rather than the green that you quite often see um, for, for signs. So big thumbs up in terms of the, the signage and there is a, a website so I've just type into your web browser uh, West Pennine Way and you'll certainly find it and there's a route on there and a description uh, and all the details that you could possibly need obviously you might not decide to do 46 miles in one go um, like I said it is pretty tough I hope you've enjoyed the journey um, on reflection I've certainly enjoyed it but until next time see you soon